What's up guys? Oh my goodness, this thing is amazing. Um, so you probably clicked on the video because you wanted to see what the ultimate toothpick uh, build would look like. Well, this is what it looks like and this is amazing. Um, you know, I just love flying the five inch and but sometimes you just want something you could actually drop out of your bag uh, and just rip real quick whether I'm you know again picking up at a football game or I'm you know sitting in a parking lot at dance or gymnastics um, You know or whatever you're doing when you just don't have a lot of time to you know get a five inch out or space This thing is amazing now. I'm not gonna say it rips exactly like a five inch um, But it does you know it doesn't have the weight Necessarily for inertia for that floaty feeling. It's pretty locked in. It's tight. You've got to stay on the throttle um, but it uh, it's pretty darn close. So I've got the build video all ready to load up. Um, go ahead and take a look at it. At the end I do the beta flight configuration and I got a little bit of rippage with it. Uh, the only downside that I see to this thing is I can't figure out how to get a beeper on it. Um, so don't lose it. Uh, I'll, you know, hopefully I'll figure out a way. There's no beeper, there's no beacon on the ESCs because they're BL Heli S. Um, but man, I, I've got all the components down in the description. You will not be disappointed if you build this and configure it the way that I configured it. Um, you will be blown away. So, uh, with that said, a special shout out to Sam at Excel Drones. He hooked me up with all the parts, uh, gave me the idea for the build, and uh, I can't be more happy with the Pyro Drone uh, and uh, the rest of the components in here. So down in the description, please leave a comment, build it, then leave a comment, that'd be even better. Uh, I'd love to see what you guys think. So check out the build, and I'll talk to you guys later. All right, let's get started. Um, so this is the Gnarly FPV Primo uh, toothpick frame. You can get this on Pyro Drone. It's about 20 bucks for the kit, uh, and it comes with a lot of options. Um, it's got different battery mounts, different camera mounts. Uh, for this ultimate toothpick build, I'll show you what I'm using. Uh, and it comes with this nice canopy. It's nice and streamlined. Such a clean build. That's why I like this. Um, also, this is the Pyro Drone F4. Uh, this is the all-in-one micro. ESC and flight controller. Uh, it's running BL Heli S, uh, 12 amp, so you can run two to four S. Uh, I'm gonna run, uh, I'll talk about these in a second, but I'm just gonna run two S on this just because of the you know the lightness of this. Um, you know, three S is, is just gonna put it into the moon. Um, this is the, the Matek F411 target uh, on this board. Uh, so we also have the, I'm actually gonna put in uh, FR Sky this is the RXSR. You guys are all familiar with these, so I'm gonna put that in there. Um, I also have the Happy Models. This is the, um, uh, sorry, these are the Hyperlite. These are the 1103s. Um, so same size as my Beta FPVs, but these, instead of the 11,000 kV, these are the 8,022 kV um, solid motor. Uh, and then we have uh, the camera, actually running the HC F7 camera and VTX combination. I, I just like this, this is very streamlined. Um, we'll see how we're gonna mount it. Uh, and I think it's gonna be, um, well actually I know now, uh, but it is very durable the way that it's mounted. So I really like this camera, great image as well. Um, and then, you know, I've got HQ props. These are the 65 millimeters. Uh, these are the 1.5 millimeter shafts. Uh, I'm gonna put all this down in the description, but I wanted to run through it really quickly for you. Uh, so for tools, all you need, pair of scissors, um, you need a 1.5 millimeter um, hex, and cause this is all uh, two millimeter, or sorry, M2 uh, screws, which I'm not tremendously uh, used to using. Uh, I got some blue tack to help us out. Um, got some mounting tape, uh, got our camera mount, some harnesses, got a couple of the, um, Sorry, these are a couple of the uh, forever tubes. We're gonna mount these right in the back here to protect the, uh, the RX. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, that's about it. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to route the motors first. Let me clear away some of this stuff so we can have a little bit of room. Um, but we're gonna put these depth through and we're gonna run the um, the motors down through the bottom of this. Um, so that way it's gonna keep of things. It's going to keep those wires out there and it's going to be a nice clean build 
Um, so I'm just gonna do one of them just to show you how I'm doing it. Uh, the great thing is you actually can take a small piece of tape. Uh, this will help you in the short term. Um, oops. We'll take a small piece of tape as we're mounting these. Um, and we're gonna hold down those wires. So these just take two screws. Um, not very complicated, except I can't seem to get it in. Um, let's try to get this puppy in there. There we go. Um, so we're gonna take that, and then I'm gonna hold these wires down real quick, and make them nice and flat for the build, just for a second. You're gonna retape these anyway, but for now, I'm gonna put these down through here. Whoops, my tape fell off. So we uh, got one screw in the mount uh, for the motors. I just wanted to show you how I'm routing these. So I'm gonna route them down through this hole right here. I'm gonna do this for all four. So two in the back, uh, two in the front. I put a small piece of tape just to hold these wires down while I'm doing the mounting. Uh, I just put in one screw for now. Um, I'm going to get all four of these on, and we'll come back, and then we'll put in the uh, we'll put in the flight controller. All right, so we have the motors run in and are actually routed out the bottom. Um, we're actually going to get the flight controller in now, which is a little more difficult. Um, what I did find, so the USB is also going to come out that back hole. Um, what I did find is if I press fit these in and be very delicate. Hopefully I can get this first time on camera. I've done it a couple times now. So if I kind of press those in, I've already got the screws in the standoffs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to gently put this in there and then try to line up that USB. It's a little more difficult because you've got the wires in there as well and this is a really tight fit. So you want to make sure your motor wires are out of the way on the bottom. And we're going to try to slide that right in there and I think it worked. So put your standoffs in first with your screws. And I think we're good there. And we're going to try to... Ah, voila! First time on camera that always makes me happy um, because I'm not I'm not the best builder in the world, but, and we're gonna zip tie this down anyway. Um, so we're gonna zip tie this to the arm. So I just used tape to hold these down um, initially. And then now we've got the board in. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put our motors, just make sure when you do these um, that you've got the right ones. You can use, um, you can use pliers if you want. Um, I find that I'm able to get these in pretty good. Whoops. And there's plenty of length on these. That's what I like. They pop right in. You know, when I was doing the beta FPV transplant, I just didn't have enough uh, length. So I actually had the length in the wires. Um, so that's why I kind of, one of the reasons why I call this the ultimate build um, is because everything fits so nicely uh, and it's so durable. It's just tight. And then, you know, you're going to put in your battery holder right over here. So that's actually gonna protect those wires a little bit on the bottom. So you don't have to really worry about that. Um, so we'll get to that in a second. So right now, all we have to do is we've gotta wire up the camera and we've gotta get the RXSR in. Uh, we'll get the camera mounted and uh, then we'll start to um, put the canopy on. So now this is a pretty easy build guys, but man, these, uh, these things come together quite nicely. All right, so we've got all of our pads tinned. Um, I'll actually go through them really quickly here. Uh, so up top, we have our ground and our five volt. Um, and then we have our RX1 and TX1. And these obviously is for our RXSR. On the bottom, we have the, um, the five volt, the ground, which is tucked way in there, so be careful. Uh, and then we have the video in, video out, and then on the very outside, TX2, which we'll use for smart audio. So I'll show you really quickly. I'm actually not gonna do them all on camera, 
but these are, you can use pliers if you'd like, again, um, I prefer not to, so um, I'm pretty nimble with my hands, but I'm just going to lay this wire right on here, I'm just going to touch it just a little bit and not bridge that pad, which I kind of did. Getting old. Voila! Alright, that is in there. That probably was a little harder than uh, than it should have been. Uh, but I'll do the same thing with the 5 volt. Get it right in there. And voila. Alright, so I'm going to finish up wiring this. I'm going to get the RXSR uh, on there and we'll get everything connected. Uh, and then start to button this down and uh, get the ca get the camera mounted and then do the canopy. So, all right, same thing with the receiver. Um, I'm actually going to go start at the top uh, with my ground, and that's just going to lay right on there. Voila! Uh, and then we're going to get it some power. Red's the next pad. Voila, um, and then I have my, whoops, I'm sorry. I have RX1, which is yellow. That's gonna go right here. Hopefully you can see all this. If you can't, you get the idea. If you guys have done builds before. And then on the very outside is my TX1. So this, gotta get that one right in there. It's being a little stubborn. There we go. Boom. We are wired. So we've got the receiver harness, the camera. Pop the receiver in there. We are ready to get this thing buttoned up. Let's go ahead and mount the board. Uh, let me find my, uh, so this is my two millimeter, this is my one millimeter. So now that we've got this in here, I'm actually gonna Tighten this down, and let's go ahead to the other side. Tighten this down. It's starting to look really good. Um, all right, so I, as you remembered, I only put one screw in each of the motors. I always do that just in case I gotta do something else and I gotta reconfigure things. Uh, so now I'll go ahead and put the rest of the screws in here. Um, there are, you know, four packs of five screws. I mean, they're tiny, tiny, so you've got to be very careful. I hate doing these because, see, it's too difficult for me. Uh, that's why I like to do them off camera because I can't get them in there, so I will do them off camera. One thing I do want you to notice, though, is you got to make sure that these are perfectly centered um, so they're not rubbing on any of the carbon. Yeah, I mean... You're going to be able to get the screws in there, but you're, you've got to make sure that they're perfectly centered before you mount them. There you go. That one's in there nice. So I will, uh, I'll tighten all these down. We'll get the, uh, we'll get the actual battery holder on the bottom. We'll put the canopy on top. All right, so we've got everything wired up. Um, Got the RX, got the camera, I got the additional screws to the bottom of the motors, I put both in, those are nice and tight now. Um, this harness we're just going to slide, I'll show you. So the, the front being this way, um, we're actually going to slide this antenna on up. You can adjust the antenna and the, uh, whoops, the antenna and the um, angle once you get it in. So I'm actually just going to line up that hole, you're going to watch me desperately try to get these little tiny screws in here, but um, we'll get one in and then we'll go ahead and put the other one in. You have to force it up a little bit. Let me see if I get it on the camera. So you just gotta force the camera mount up in so you can see the hole and then just tighten that down. and should be good. Um, all right, so we've got a camera in there. Uh, now I've got, I took the uh, 3M, uh, this is the Extreme, you guys probably, a lot of you use this, but for some of the new people, this is the 3M Extreme mounting tape. You can get it anywhere, Amazon, Target, it's like five bucks, this stuff is like 
like once it gets on and sets, it's unbelievable. You just have to kind of press down for a little bit, hold it for like 10, 15 seconds, uh, and then it kind of sets itself. So, um, all right, so the RXSR is a little um, bigger than the XM. Uh, so what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna try to loop these back through. Now it's only important that the exposed side, um, these exposed ends are actually through into the forever tube. Everything else is just for tuning. Um, so for these, you're gonna watch me try to do it on camera and hopefully I can. Oh, and there's one. Just gotta be very careful with them. Don't pull on them too tight. So we've got one down. We're actually gonna mount it like this. So the back of this is gonna be this way and then it'll loop back down and across. So we'll do the same thing with this side. You can reposition the wires after, um, but hopefully I can do this one on camera. You can watch me struggle um, or I'll edit it out one or the other, but. Aha, uh -huh, we got the other one. Um, so we could slide these again. Don't pull on it too tight and kind of slide these through. And then you can put your forever tubes on. So these just snug fit, um, cut them to length. I got a bunch of these and you know, just slide them on in there and force them all the way down. I got a little bit coming out there, but I'll take care of that. Um, when we reposition the wires, same way with this one, we'll get these in here. Just force them all in as far as you can. And again, we got a little exposed there, but we're gonna kind of pull these out a little bit, pull this one out a little bit so it's not all exposed. And then we're going to, with the 3M mounting tape, we're actually gonna slide this back here like this. Make sure I've got, oh, it's because my cable over here is tapped around the board. There we go. Now it's easy. And we're just gonna set that right on there. Hold it for a few seconds. Voila. And we're gonna kind of angle that camera up and then you just kind of snug these wires in. Just try to get them in as best you can so it stays within the canopy. Um, I mean, you're gonna have crashes and stuff. And it's gonna be all right. This is a nice snug fit. Um, so it should stay pretty contained. And then you should have, uh, you should have three more screws left. Um, three more of the M2s. So we're gonna tighten this down. Again, I tighten everything, even on my, uh, my five inch quads, I tighten everything to just finger tight, right? Enough that like three fingers is gonna get it to where it is. You don't wanna to torque down on it. Um, you, know, you can strip screws, snap screws. So you just get it down in there. And again, just, just enough so it has a little tension. Um, all right, guys, this thing's pretty sweet. I'm gonna throw a zip tie on here um, to hold this down. Um, but fundamentally, we have a completed ultimate toothpick. Um, all of the uh, parts are listed in there and you can tuck these in. You just take, um, you can even take this. So you can take a small screwdriver and just start to tuck some of these in here. Um, doesn't really matter. As long as your soldering job is good, um, you, can, you can tuck all these in there and not have to worry about it. Um, people get pretty OCD about their builds. Um, I don't because I'm gonna crash them and I'm going to take them apart again and I'm gonna crash them and I'm gonna take them apart again and it's gonna go over and over. So I don't paint them, I don't you know, do wire harnesses and all this pretty stuff. I just uh, build them so they're durable and that they fly. Um, and these things, uh, this thing's pretty nice. So ultimate toothpick build, all the parts are in the description. Uh, drop a comment if you have any questions. Uh, I'll probably retape these down just a little bit more to hold these. I just did it so when we first get this on. Oh, I forgot about the battery thing. Um, so you should have, again, one screw left, as I mentioned. Uh, and this sets in these two recessed areas. Screw goes in. This is really nice. This is a nice mount. So what I'm running is, uh, these are the Tattoo 450 Ma 95 c um, 2S batteries. This is perfect for this weight. 
Um, you can go 3S, but it's, you know, again, uh, you're gonna get somewhere between six and nine minutes, depending on what kind of flying you're doing with these things. Um, so this is it guys, I hope you like it. I'm gonna go out and rip for a little bit, show you what the footage is like. It's gonna be DVR footage, of course, but uh, these things are so much fun to fly. They're almost as fun to, uh, much fun to fly as a five inch, um, but uh, especially, you know, this is easier just to drop out of your bag uh, when you're traveling or you just got a little break in between, um, like for me, picking up my kids or, you know, whatever. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you have any questions, drop it in the comments. See you guys. Okay, let's run through the setup real quick. Uh, I am on beta flight 10.5.1. Uh, this target for the pyro drone is the Maytech F411. And the firmware that I've got this sitting on is the 4.0.4. .4. Uh, this feels great. I haven't touched it. I'm not gonna move it uh, up or upgrade the firmware at this point. So uh, not much you need to do here. Uh, on the port side, you know, UART1, which is uh, RX1 in the uninverted S bus, uh, is that's where you click over to Serial RX. Uh, that's for your receiver. UART2, uh, I use this for my TBS Smart Audio, uh, so I can control the VTX through the Tyrannus. Uh, make sure you hit Save and Reboot uh, before you exit the screen. On the configuration side, I'm running DShot 600, uh, 5.5 is my modal idle, motor idle throttle value, so that's 5.5%, that's working great. Um, my gyro and PID is 8 and 4, I had this at 8 and 8, um, it was shooting the CPU, CPU load way up, up way too high, so I actually uh, reduced this to 8 and 4 and it's sitting down right around 13, so that's great. Uh, I turn off my accelerometer as well. Um, because that reduces that CPU load. I do this for all my quads. Um, so uh, craft name, uh, make sure you have serial based receiver and S bus uh, selected for this. Um, and then down in my uh, other features, I have telemetry selected so I can get telemetry out output to my, um, to my OSD and to my Tyrannus. I have air mode selected. I turn on air mode on all of these, most of my, you know, whoops and, and the smaller quads. Uh, I do not have it on a switch. Um, I have the OSD uh, clicked on, anti-gravity and dynamic filter. Uh, pretty much that's all it. There is no D-Shot beacon um, or using the ESC sensor because that's uh, that's for 32-bit. And the Pyro drone is running the um, BL Heli S, not the BL Heli 32. Uh, so make sure you save and reboot. Uh, power and batteries all reading out correctly. I don't have to change any of the voltage meters or scales or anything. On the PID tuning side, all you need to do is adjust your rates. RC rate, super rate, RC expo. Uh, anything else you do to adjust your rates. But these PIDs are pretty locked in, so I didn't feel any need to actually tune this thing right now. Um, on the receiver side, obviously set up your channel map. Um, and then uh, I have my RSSI channel is running off AUX12. Uh, so I get my output here on AUX12. Uh, and then uh, modes, just set up your normal modes. ARM, I have it on AUX1. Uh, beeper, I can actually delete because there is no beeper. Uh, and then flip over after crash. So for turtle mode, I have it on AUX3. Uh, so just make sure you set your modes and click save. Um, and then just set up your OSD. You know, I have RSSI, my main battery voltage, which I don't really use because I started actually using my milliamp hours drawn and I put it right in the center. Um, that was a nice tip I was given from my buddy, Justin. Uh, this helps me look at, you know, I, I know kind of the numbers that I'm looking for in all of my rigs. Uh, so when this starts to get around that 80% of my, uh, my battery, 70% of my battery, then I start to pay attention. And then of course I have the battery voltage here and I have a throttle timer on the Tyrannus, uh, which I think is just great because that's actually taking a percentage of the throttle um, and using a timer to count it down based upon how much I'm on the throttle. Takes a little bit of getting used to, but there is a great tutorial. I think Steel did one and Stingy did one on how they use that. So um, highly recommend that if you actually wanna do the uh, timer, uh, the throttle timer uh, on the Tyrannus itself, if you're using the Tyrannus. Um, so that's really about it guys. Um, nothing much, just click save and you're done.